Long ago, while I was a young, naive artist, I was going on a trip to some miscellaneous national park when I observed the fact that high-altitude cirrus clouds looked remarkably like terrain height maps. So I figured, what if instead of generating my height maps, I just used cloud pictures? Genius! So when I got back home, I downloaded a picture from Google Images, loaded it into Blender, and immediately realized that I had no clue as to what I was doing, and scrapped the project for the next few years. Before the challenge even starts, I have to lay down a couple of ground rules to solidify the challenge for myself and to prevent misunderstandings. So my first step was getting a large library of royalty-free cloud images from places like Pexels, Pixabay, and other websites. It was important to get a good variety of images because I wasn't sure as to what I might need. As for the terrain itself, rather than letting Gaia and World Creator duke it out in a duel of the fates, I used the two softwares in collaboration. I start off using World Creator as its terrain stamping tool is fantastic for the generation of the base shape. If you're wondering why the cloud displacements look so soft, it's because World Creator has level steps, which essentially controls the level of detail that the stamp influences. I then do some basic erosion and distortions to make the base shape look nice and crispy. At this point, I am trying to slowly refine the natural shape that is already in the clouds and organize them into a nice aesthetically appealing pattern. I then export the base height map. Here, I have a terrain doodle I made in Gaia. Some good shapes, but no real defined landscape. A good hero mountain on its own, but not a full scene. Lots of erosion, texture nodes, and sap maps. However, this base mountain looks weak. So I replace it with the landscape I made in World Creator. I then connect the new mountain with the main body of nodes and wait a substantial amount of time for the terrain to load. After it loads, I proceed to contemplate whether or not this can even be considered to be based on clouds. I then exported several maps, a color map, height map, rock map, velocity map, and moss mask. I then opened my default terrain project, which is basically just a plane with micropolygon displacement. I then load in the color map and displacement map and plug them into their corresponding inputs. I then block out a basic material by using the color map as a bump texture. I now load the velocity map and invert it to use it as a roughness map. After this, I add a blank plane to use for a water mesh. I then load a cloud PNG, rescale it, and make it black and white. I then realize this image is compressed into oblivion and load a different cloud PNG. This one also turned out to be compressed into oblivion, so I load one last one. I then distort it with a noise pattern to increase the level of detail and to break up the pixels. After this, I load a new cloud PNG, which I intend to turn into pond weeds. You can see me editing it with a color ramp and masking out the highlights. This will be used as the main bump and the weeds mask. I then load another cloud image to be used as additional detail and colorization. I then add a mapping node so I can rescale and reposition the cloud texture. You can see the color ramp is one of the most powerful nodes. I then use this cloud texture as additional bump to make the pond weeds look a lot more detailed. The rest of this section is me masking out flows using a combination of position-based masking and the velocity map, which are combined using linear light and some color adjustments. Then using this texture as a mix factor between a black glossy shader and the main shader. Most of this workflow is just fiddling, refining, and trying new things. I then realize I need a good moss texture. So, I load up Photoshop and use a bunch of distortions, masks, and overlay modes to slowly refine the image to something that looks vaguely moss-like. You can see me making the texture seamless here, signified by the black brush going across the screen. 
It all ends up looking like this. Not very moss-like, but it's close enough. I then go back into Blender and load the moss texture and use it as a bump map to increase detail. After this, I combine it with the original color map using Multiply. I then use a mixture of Gamma, Fresnel, and the Bump node to create a nice sheen for the moss. I then realize I need a rock texture, so I go back into Photoshop with a new cloud image and follow the same workflow as the previous texture of experimenting with masks and overlay types. I then load it back into Blender and use the same workflow I had for the moss, minus the sheen, and multiply it with the rock mask I exported from Gaia. I then do some fiddling and add some subsurface scattering to the moss to make it look a bit softer. After I finish the terrain material, I set up lighting and the overall atmosphere to the render. I started this process by adding an HDRI with lots of deep blues and high contrast. In the background, you can see me taking advantage of the modular aspects of the terrain by duplicating it, rotating it, and scaling it a few times. I then add a large volumetric haze, as I'm going for a dark marshy feel and the clear air looks too flat. You can see me adjusting and filling with the anisotropy and the color as I am trying to make it look more like moisture rather than smoke or dust. I also increase the volume bounces to 2, so I can get a good amount of scattering. For this section, you can see me converting the moss mask to black and white. This is because I'm adding it to the actual micropolygon displacement to increase actual detail and not just normal base detail. At this point, I remove the sun lamp entirely, as I realized it was adding too much contrast to the overall scene. After this, I have a Jay Pierce moment. What if I added a glowing ring? So that's what I did. In fact, I added several glowing rings. I then added a mysterious orb in the middle, not only because it looked cool, but it also added a main focus to the scene. For the orb's material, I basically just combined the rock texture with the world creator height map and the Gaia moss mask to create an interesting pattern in the surface. I am simply using what I already made. I then render it for a solid 20 seconds before I realize it looks like poop, so I go back into Blender to make a few adjustments. I start by increasing the overall brightness of the HDRI, then increasing the overall contrast of it by adding some gamma to the HDRI. I then backlight it using a large diffused blue sun lamp. Most of the stage is fiddling and refining, not really any good workflow to showcase. I then add a second ring just for the sake of it. You then can see me experimenting with the color spaces, seeing if any of them in particular stick out as something I want. I then had a revolutionary thought. What if I made clouds using clouds? So I then added a box and a new material, made it volume scattering, and applied one of the many cloud images to it, distorting it with some noise and adding some feathering as the fog goes higher with the gradient and linear lights. Then you can see me go through pretty much everything again, just aligning and refining even more. This is not a do this, then this, then do that, then do this, then do this workflow. It's very finicky. I then render it again, and notice one of the mistakes I made with the sun lamp. I made it too small. That's why there's so much noise on the ground, as well as that the cloud in the background bothered me a bit, so I just removed it. I then do a quick 40 minute render so I can get some basic compositing down. I start by adding quite a bit of glare to increase the foggy atmosphere of the image. I set the threshold quite low and make it very subtle. I then add curves adjustments to increase the contrast and add some blues to the shadows. I then add a color balance node and set it to offset power slope and make the midtones very blue to emphasize that cold muggy feeling in the scene. I then exit the compositing workspace and proceed to enable all useful passes. Then I increase the samples to 400 and let it render for 2 hours overnight. Once I woke up, I immediately got back to work on it while it was still fresh in my mind, and just fiddled and experimented with what the passes could do. The most useful passes for this scene were the mist pass, the ambient occlusion pass, and the volume direct pass, as well as the subsurface pass. 
After I was satisfied with the compositing of the scene, I exported four passes, the mist pass, emission pass, volume pass, and beauty pass. I then open Photoshop one last time and do a bit of finalizing touches using various photo bashing techniques, essentially refining the atmosphere and adding little fragments and pieces of clouds to increase the overall detail in the fog. Color dodge and soft light were very useful tools here. This was my first fully edited and cut video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. If you have critiques, please provide them. And most importantly, if you have questions, please ask them. I'm wondering if I should make this challenge thing a series on my channel, as it's not something I normally do. Please tell me if you want to see more of this.